So many of you were thinking, hey, Ross, this is it. Look, I've got many communications from what just took place. As we understand that, Iran struck Israel. I'm not going to go into great detail on that, but I did write about it, and I blogged about it wee hours of the morning. And if you wish to take that in, go to my website. It's about a two-minute read, and it explains my take, again, from a biblical standpoint of view, is more about in this video, but from what actually took place from my understanding is in my website, and I think you'll find it helpful. One other thing about my website, I'm starting to use it a little bit more when I just have a point to get across. So you'll notice if you start reading in there that last week I I blogged several times. So um, you might want to take note of that. Uh, I'm going to leave a link uh, in the vid right below this video. If you go down there and it, it'll you know it says description. If you just click on that, it'll open up that box, and right there will be that link to my website. When you're in the website, there's a link right there that you can press and hit YouTube, and it'll take you right back to here again. So you can easily switch back and forth. That being out of the way, greetings to all of you folks. Something happened that I think is monumental, and we should talk about it, because it was not in Scripture. And from the early on, I started doubting everything. And I'll tell you why. And I've, I've, I've even brought this up as like video before the last one. And it's right around about the five minute marker to the seven minute marker right in there where I said this is the one thing that is still creating curiosity for me. And uh, I brought that up and explained it to you. So this allows me now to actually get more into being able to, it would be like being able to pinpoint more and they also explain of where we are within Scripture. And also it allows me now to explain again something that's very important, and that is, is the severity of the sudden destruction is talked about. Paul, 1 Thessalonians 5.3. The severity, people, I'm not too sure many are catching on, and that's why I was so skeptical when... Iran struck Israel. I just said, I, 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 that was just curious to me because, you see, what Asaph, the psalmist, is saying and explaining to everyone is this is going to be a huge event when that sudden destruction Paul talks about. Let's, let's, let, let me, um, I've already got it lined up. Just let me, I, I want to use scripture folks to get my points across and you can probably tell I'm a little bit frustrated because it's hard for me to be able to explain but yet scripture the way it's written if we take it literally like we're supposed to it makes sense what what's happening is making sense and I'll get into that more in just a minute but I'm going to come right down here and this is uh, Asaph speaking this is Psalms 83 and we're in 13 and here he says oh God make them like a wheel as a stubble before the wind. He didn't do that. Uh, as the fire burneth a wood, and flame setteth the mountains on fire, that was definitely not taking place. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Nothing was happening to the enemies. This is all about Israel, and that's why I instantly became really skeptical. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Do you understand the magnitude of the sudden destruction that Paul is talking about? Okay, let me go on down here a little bit further. And these two are probably the most important, and you hear me talking about them quite often. Let them be confounded and troubled. This is forever. Anyone that told you Psalms 83 has already happened or is, is happened at one time before and may happen again, they didn't read this verse, and they didn't understand this. Troubled forever, ye let them be put to shame and perish. And come down here, and this is a clincher right here, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth, that men may know, okay, uh, let's see, the most high over the, let's see, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah and the most high over all the earth. So all will know, that's the, the magnitude, the point I'm trying to get across here folks, is the magnitude of, of this prophecy when it happens 
the church is going to be taken out of the way. Okay, so if we're watching it, I'm just going, really? Because that means we didn't get something right someplace. Well, let me explain that part to you. Okay, let me just switch over to here. I'm going to go over this. is familiar scripture, folks, but you see, it allows us to better understand what's happening. Okay, it says right here, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then the sudden destruction comes. When they say peace and safety, this is what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, then the sudden destruction comes. That sudden destruction is going to be huge. Zechariah clearly tells us that all those nations that trouble themselves will be cut to pieces. So here's the part that I would like to get across today if I can that's been mm, kind of on the back burner with me. Okay, and that is, is that the peace and safety, that hasn't been said yet. But here it comes. All right, folks. What just took place is like a unneeded dam of water. And someone just says, well, if it's not needed, just bust it. And, it, and, and now the, everything starts to flow again. Well, in Israel, it almost became stagnant. It, 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 it is at a standstill, and we needed something to bust Israel loose. This is going to give a lot of credence to what Israel has been saying for the longest time. And that is, is that we must eliminate our enemies. And that included in Rafa, Hamas, Gaza Strap. And, and although you can't do that, says the world, bringing great condemnation to Israel, is what is the matter with you? Is something wrong with you? You're trying to defend yourself. Well, you have to stop right there because that land is partially belongs to the Palestinians. And Israel said, no, you don't understand. We're fighting for the survival of our life. Well, it's life, Israel's life. It was an attempt to remove Israel's life. This was a direct blow, attempt at a direct blow into the sovereignty of Israel. Israel was in a fight for its life. And would you say God stepped in? No. First of all, the church didn't disappear, did it? And second of all, the rest of the world would have been involved in this action of God's. If this was what the psalmist told God to do, and God said he was going to do, it, it just wasn't there for me. I, I couldn't see it, and I think I just explained that when I went over the scripture, the two scriptures for you. It, it, it just wasn't there. So I guess what it is, is the magnitude of this sudden destruction that Paul talks about, them saying peace and safety, this is going to have to come up. Is it more likely now that Israel will start making some other decisions. I, I don't know what. I mean, it's, it's up in the air. That's up for discussion. You know, uh, some sort of a, you know, Hamas is going to realize that what was to take place didn't work. They might want to rethink some sort of a negotiation deal with Israel. If Israel is to capitulate and it's supposed to give in now, and, and you know, America helped it, so therefore America has now more say-so, and uh, that's in the blog, by the way. Then, Israel, you must listen to all these other people. And what we need to do is we need to get to a point to where somehow we solve this problem within Israel. Then they would say peace and safety. Not peace and security. Peace and safety. Paul makes it very um, explicit. It, 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 it's when they say it. So can Israel now do something with a truce, a ceasefire, a prisoner swap deal? Uh, can Hamas feel more threatened now that Israel is serious about this? See, this kind of like starts going to start everything flowing. It's like hitting a reset button. And now is the time to really start paying attention to what's going to be happening in Israel. And I'm going to be doing that. And uh, I'll be using my, um, my website a little bit more on a daily basis uh, as I feel things and I'd like to get a point across to, you know, emphasize, to bring about. But <clears throat> let's summarize this whole thing. Okay, what took place was almost necessary for Israel to get out of a stagnant situation that it's in. Can't go left, right, up, or down. I said that in one of my videos. 
they're just stuck. Now this is going to release them. They'll have more avenues to go down and they'll have a little more strength behind them saying, hey, look, what I said was going to happen. That, that Iran is the real problem and look what they did. See, this opens it up for Israel now. It's Israel's turn. Israel can say, now it's our turn to hit you back again, Iran. Now, in the blog, I'd like you to read that because that's not going to happen. So, where are we then? Okay, we, we understood what took place, you know, in the last, what, 12, 14 hours. We understand we're at the end of that now. We're understanding what Scripture says. Scripture tells us a sudden destruction. Asaph talks about a sudden something that God does, not man, not missile defense systems. This is something that God does, but God didn't do this. And that's why I could tell, and I didn't make a video right away. <clears throat> I know everyone jumped on the wagon. I saw it in all over the place where people said, this is it, this is it. And I'm going, no, 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 slow down, hold on. I even talked about it, um, several communications with uh, a lot of people that, uh, well, Ross, what do you think? And I, I just said, not yet. And, and there, that's, that's it folks. Not yet. We have to wait and see. We have to give it more time. And now we can start talking more about that when they say peace and safety. That's what we're going to be watching for now. Okay? That's all right. What I'm going to be doing and, um, you know, I'll listen to your replies. You guys want to, you can communicate with me also through the website. Um, you know, I'll see your, your um, messages there. And again, folks, Israel's in a new position, and it's going to change things. And these things that are changing could bring about an understanding amongst many that would say, now it's time for peace and safety. And when that happens, that's when I would start paying attention. And uh, again, I'll be keeping up on the blogs on that from this point on. I'm quite sure I will. Folks, I hope this was helpful to you. It it's, it was a big thing to Israel, but yet it survived it. I, I think the, you know, the most damage was a, a military base, and no one was really even hurt. And, and close to 300-some pieces of power, whether they be drones or UAVs, same thing, uh, missiles, whatever it might have been, you know, unsuccessful. Just amazing to me. But yet, look what it's doing. Good? Okay, I'm starting to repeat myself, so that means I should bring this to an end. <laughs> we're, we're going to be talking more about this through the week. Again, I may just be doing short little blogs off and on uh, as we go, as I see things. Good? All right, folks, thank you again. Uh, you know, for my last videos, all the kind words, folks, I just take a minute to, to say this. Thank you so very much. You know, it's, it's encouraging to me. It's helpful. And when you folks agree and say, oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's kind of like another witness coming to me saying, Ross, you're on the right path. You know, so do you see how we, we learn from each other? And, and the way I see that is I call it fellowship. So those replies uh, are helpful, folks, and needed, actually. Thank you very much for them, okay? All right, until next Sunday or next video, we'll wait and see. <laughs>